Good afternoon. It is Sunday afternoon, July 25th, 2021. I want to share with you today a brief news update on the Reformation Charlotte podcast. Today, it was brought to my attention that a pastor of a local church here called Five Stones Church um, was caught recently in a, in a serial plagiarism scandal. This scandal is very similar to what um, the Southern Baptist president, Ed Litton, has been caught up in. Um, today, this pastor was brought before the congregation and he was made to resign. Um, also, he offered up a confession, confessed his sins, confessed that he'd been doing this for a long time and accepted the resignation. So what I want to do today is compare and contrast this pastor's response to being caught in a plagiarism scandal and compare it to Ed Litton's response. So first thing I want to do is go ahead and just show you this video of this pastor's confession to his church this morning. Hey, Five Stones. It's hard for me to believe that this July marks 25 years that I've been in full-time ministry, with 12 of those years being the teaching pastor at Five Stones. Over the course of that 25 years, I've been blessed to be a part of so many people's lives as I've shared the gospel. And while the majority of that time has been nothing but up, today is a difficult day as I need to confess that this summer I preached someone else's sermons. Some will ask, was this an isolated occurrence? And the answer to that is no. The elders had addressed this issue with me in the past. After several meetings with the elders, it was agreed that it would be in the best interest of Five Stones and myself for me to turn in my resignation. Thankfully, Five Stones has never been about one personality, but instead it's been a plurality of leadership. And so it's important for the church to hear me say that I support the elders. I am confident that Five Stones will continue to help people take their next step with God in the days ahead. And I pray you will forgive me for those choices that I've made. Thank you, church, for how you have loved and supported our family over the years. And I thought long and hard about the last words that I wanted to say to the church. May you be so caught up in the love of God that whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley, that you choose to pursue Christ. May you live with the knowledge that God has upheld you since you were conceived and carried you since you were born, and that he's never lost a battle. May you hear his good promise to you, child. I am your father. I will sustain you and I will carry you and I will rescue you even to your old age. And may you trust that he will guide your ship safely to shore. God bless. Now, I'm not familiar with this pastor. I don't know if this is a Southern Baptist church. I don't think that it is. However, um, it is very clear that this pastor, upon being approached by his church and his colleagues, decided to take the honorable path compared to Ed Litton. So in contrast to what this, this pastor did, let, let me play for you what Ed Litton has done. Litton is also seeing how brutal things can be as the leader of the largest Protestant group less than two weeks after becoming president. You've been charged with plagiarism. Allegations Litton lifted passages in sermons from his predecessor of the convention, J.D. Greer. In a statement, Litton said he had permission from Greer to use those passages, and Greer agreed. And where did the where did those charges come from? Do you know? I mean, no, they're unnamed. That's part oh, of the really? problem. Okay. Right. So unnamed sources have have uh, are presenting these things, right. which should make everybody take a pause. Litton is expected to hold the job as. Okay, so Ed Litton, as you see here instead of taking the honorable path, confessing his sins and resigning his position, decides to double down. He didn't do anything wrong, he, he contends, and um, has absolutely no intention of, of stepping down and, and relinquished, relinquishing his position. So let's go back to this other pastor for a minute. Uh, prior to this confession that this pastor made, his fellow elders at that church uh, prompted or, or, or gave a, uh, let's see here, let me go back. Since you were born. They, they gave the church, um, filled, basically he filled them in on what was going on. 
and gave very good reasons of why not only um, is it right for him to resign, but it actually laid out good reasons of why it is sin and deceptive and how um, he wasn't preaching what he learned when he was studying the scriptures, but yet he was preaching somebody else's studies and what somebody else had learned and gleaned from the scriptures, which is the same case we've been trying to make all along with Ed Litton and why this is wrong and why plagiarism is wrong because it's lazy, it's sloth, it just, and it's deceptive. So let, let's, let's play that. And then finally, when Five Stones was founded, it was founded based on elder leadership bylaws written to help us in different situations that we hope would not happen but if they did there would be a plan in place five stones was established with co-pastors rather than a senior leader and then lastly there's always as we walk through things with anticipate authenticity and transparency there's always been a dependency on god's word so please turn your attention and respect to these two gentlemen. Now these are our Pastor Greg's co co-pastors. Uh, this is Tom Hildebrand, and we stand before you today representing the full Five Stones Elder Board to share some difficult news. Recently, the elders once again uncovered a reoccurring pattern of sermons preached by Greg lacking authenticity and integrity. More specifically, Greg has plagiarized. He delivered multiple sermons leading the elders and the church to believe that he was sharing what God was teaching him when in reality he took the messages that were written by other pastors and shared them as his own. This was done without the other pastor's knowledge or permission and against the instruction of the elders. It saddens us to say that this is not the first time that this has taken place. There's been a reoccurring pattern over a number of Now, if this sounds like a familiar story to you, <laughs> well, it is. Uh, this is pretty much exactly what has happened with Lytton. Um, now, the difference here is Ed Litton, who has been plagiarizing his predecessor, J.D. Greer, for years. Um, we've documented it back to at least 2013, I believe. It, he claims after he got caught plagiarizing the Romans 1 sermon, he and, and Greer both claimed that he had permission to do so. Now, whether or not that's true, you know, I, I can't prove one way or the other. Nobody can. Um, it sounds like it's a cover up. It sounds like they got together and decided this is what we're going to say to try to sweep this under the rug. Let's just get this over with and, and move past it. But since then, so many others have been discovered. So many other sermons dating all the way back to 2013. And it's it's it, if he had permission to plagiarize J.D. Greer as far back as 2013, then in reality, both of them should be implicated in, in this scandal. Um, and they both are really already because, I mean, J.D. Greer has already been caught uh, plagiarizing Paul Tripp, for example, presenting one story about a mission trip into Asia as his own experience when it was actually nothing more than a reworded version of Paul Tripp's story. Um, so what you're going to see here is you're going to see how this church handles this case, this type of sin differently and biblically compared to how Ed Litton and his co-pastors who are in on this scandal, by the way, who also have plagiarized J.D. Greer, by the way, and are refusing to hold him accountable and instead are doing everything they can to ignore it, sweep it under the rug and um, to, to try to try to change the subject. So 
let, let's watch the difference here. Watch how these pastors handle it. And they actually, um, th they actually care about the integrity of their church, um, representing the nature of, of God, who he is, his character, and they care about the truth. At least it sounds like here so far. Again, I'm not familiar with this church. This is the first that this has been brought to my attention, but I, I just see a stark contrast here. Number of years where Greg has used others' material as his own without giving proper credit. Greg is a protector of God's word. He has a passion for defending the truth of scripture. That may be true. Even when Greg used others' material, we did not uncover any messages that he shared which lacked sound doctrine. However, Greg's actions created a loss of trust. There was a lack of integrity, deceit, and gaps of authenticity by not sharing what God was teaching Greg, but sharing what God was teaching another pastor. Bam. That's the bottom line right there. If your pastor is not studying God's word daily and instead plagiarizing somebody else's scandal, then he is not feeding you authentic biblical truth. All he's doing is reciting somebody else's stuff. He does not know God's word if he has to plagiarize somebody else. That's the bottom line. If he's that lazy to to have to go with somebody else's stuff rather than put his own effort into it, then he is not worthy of being a pastor. And this church recognizes that. They asked him to step down. He took responsibility for it. And by all means, this is a good example of how to do the honorable thing if you actually get caught in this kind of sin. You step down, you move on, you get out of the way so somebody who's qualified can step in and fill that role. So Ed Litton, J.D. Greer, um, whoever else in the Southern Baptist Convention leadership that may happen to run across this, look at this as an example. Call your buddy to get out of the way. Call him to repent. Step down. Step down from his role at his church and let somebody else who's qualified fill those shoes. And that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this channel, subscribe. Visit our website at uh, www.reformationcharlotte.org. Thank you and have a good afternoon.